where would I recommend going for adventure? Cambodia and Vietnam. Welcome to Laura McKenzie's Traveler. Hi, I'm Laura McKenzie, and today I'm out in the middle of the jungle exploring ancient temples. How cool is that? I mean, it's just like out of a movie. This is the Bayan Temple in Anger Tom. We're in Cambodia, and it's a fabulous vacation. You are going to love it. Wait till you see Anger Wat. Now, I know you've seen it in picture books, but when you see it in person, it is unbelievable. So if you're ready, Onward, let's go explore our adventure in Cambodia and Vietnam. The eastern coast of Southeast Asia is a gem that has for decades been concealed from foreigners. But with years of political unrest behind them, Cambodia and Vietnam are inviting the world to uncover the riches their countries have to offer. From royal ruins, to ancient arts, plus an amazing variety of shopping experiences. There's so much to see and do here. We begin our cultural treasure hunt by seeking out one of the most incredible places in the world, the lost city of the gods. For centuries, the ancient city of Angkor Thom has lain hidden beneath the rainforest of central Cambodia. The only people who knew of its existence were traveling monks who stumbled across it on their treks through the Cambodian jungle. They would tell legends about this mysterious city, which appeared to have been built by gods or giants. But few people believed these tales to be true. And so the city lay cloaked in mystery for over 400 years, until Henry Mahout uncovered it in 1860. Can you imagine coming out of the jungle and finding all this in the late 1800s? Incredible. Notice I say it was found then. The temple's almost a thousand years old. Looks like a movie set, doesn't it? But no movie set is this big. The city of Angkor Thom was once the capital of Cambodia and home to one million people. That means the population of Angkor Thom would rival that of current day Dallas, Texas. The wooden buildings where the residents worked and lived have long since decayed, but their temples remain, and they had a lot of temples. There are approximately 100 monuments within 15 square miles. Now, before I walk down to the most famous temple here, Angkor Wat, I first wanted to appreciate its size. The best way to do that is to get a bird's eye view. Now, this is a great way to get an overview of Angkor Wat, so once we get up, We'll see the whole layout. You can see the Angkor Wat Temple right there. You see the moat going around. You can see the bridge going across. And then off to the left, you can see how the moat goes all the way around and to the back. So you get the overview of how the water goes all the way around the temple. Then over here, you can just see the jungle that surrounds it. There's another little temple right up over here on the hill. Now remember, we're only looking at Angkor Wat, which is a temple located within the city of Angkor Thom. Though this complex is huge, there is a lot more of Angkor than what you see here. Once you've had an overview of Angkor, it's easier to comprehend the sheer size of this ancient metropolis. Yep, there will be a lot of walking. But with all there is to see here, you won't even notice your feet. Besides, just think about what incredible things you're going to see. So for now, just enjoy the view. This balloon is not only a fun adventure, it's safe. At the end, they just reel you in like a fish. You know, if you have kids, they're going to love this. Back on the ground, you're ready to see the temples up close. But don't go in unprepared. The moat around Angkor Wat alone measures four miles. This place is huge. You gotta go through here with a guide because I'm not kidding when I say you can get lost in here.
And the guides know not only their way around the temples, but can also tell you the stories behind some of the symbolism. And sometimes they'll offer something a little unexpected. The carvings at Angkor reflect the mixture of both Buddhist and Hindu beliefs in their society, and the symbolism behind the carvings is fascinating. See these two rows that line the gateway to Angkor Thom? One side has 54 demons on it. The other has 54 guardian gods. Both rows hold a seven-headed snake in their grasp. And notice the seven-headed snake. That's Naga. The Hindus believe that Naga is the great protector of treasure. And with a national gem like this, it's no wonder that we see Naga everywhere. And while you're at Angkor Wat, take time to find the bas-reliefs depicting the churning of the ocean to milk. Many visitors believe that this is the best carving at the temple. Angkor Wat is the largest religious temple in the world. And when you finally see it, you realize this place was definitely created to convey grandeur. While some think that size does matter, it's the little things that will impress you. Look at the detail right here. You can see his face. You can see his hands. You can see the jewelry over here. And look at this down here. That is absolutely gorgeous. Oh my gosh, look at this one. That is incredible. It looks like they did it this week. I'm in here going, oh my gosh, look at this. Oh my gosh, look at this. That's the way you are when you're here. Excuse me. After a day at Anchor, we've only scratched the surface of this great monument. I found that I had to make several trips back here over a couple of days to truly appreciate what it has to offer. Here's a tip. Overseas airlines often have lower luggage limits, resulting in unexpected excess charges. Check weight restrictions before you fly. Laura McKenzie's Traveler will be right back. You'll want to base yourself in the city of Sem Reap, which is about 10 minutes down the road from Angkor Thom. But don't assume that you'll be sacrificing luxury to stay close. Here in Cambodia, they offer you a little more than just a regular hotel. Here, they offer paradise. The Angkor Palace Resort and Spa is an incredible luxury hotel tucked away on a spacious estate surrounded by lush tropical gardens. A little piece of heaven here in Sem Reap, convenient to everything you want to see and do. We are 10 minutes away from the airport and 15 minutes away uh, to the temples and we are right smack in the center, five, five to seven minutes drive to the town. The location can't get any better than this, and there's natural beauty everywhere you look. It makes it so special because we have the Cambodian architecture, unique uh, deco with all the sculptures, and of course, one of the resorts which is comparable throughout the world, if, you, if it's uh, you know, something like Bali or Phuket concept. And plus, we have a large number of uh, rooms as well, and all the various facilities to complement the five-star resort. From the moment you arrive, you'll know you've discovered a special destination, and the Anchor Palace Resort welcomes you with true Khmer kindness and hospitality. The front desk and concierge service is available 24 hours to serve you with anything you need. The hotel has private villas, suites and deluxe rooms, so you're sure to find the perfect place to call home. For an unforgettable gastronomic experience, indulge in the exotic taste and excellent royal Khmer cuisine in the Soriya restaurant. Royal well, Khmer cuisine is traditionally uh, Khmer cuisine, but it's because the recipes are from uh, the palace. Made with special Cambodian spices, royal Khmer cuisine is straight from the royal kitchen. You can also indulge at the Sunset Cafe, featuring an amazing buffet as well as an a la carte menu. Serving both Asian and Western specialties, go ahead, 
Try a little of everything. You're on vacation, remember? Just don't miss the magnificent sunset. Another highlight to a perfect day. I don't know about you, but I can't come all the way to this side of the world without seeing another one of Asia's incredible destinations, where excitement, history, lots of activities, and incredible shopping are its draws to tourists. So I'm flying out from Cambodia and heading to Vietnam. This is a country that's a treasure trove of unique experiences and sights that few travelers have had the pleasure of seeing for the last 50 years. But with the vault door now open, more and more visitors are discovering the gold mine that's Vietnam, and I couldn't wait to join the ranks. Where to begin? In the capital city of Hanoi. Located in the north of the country, Hanoi is located alongside the Red River. And if you envision Vietnam as hot and humid, you'll want to prepare for a little surprise. Okay, you're looking at a map of Vietnam. It's like real long and skinny, like this, okay? You got Hanoi way up here in the north, and Saigon, or Ho Chi Minh City, way down here in the south. Now, Saigon is really hot, okay, and humid. But up here, Hanoi is up near the Chinese border, so it's gonna be a lot more seasonal. It's gonna be cooler in the winter, and hotter in the summer. Right now, it's about 60. Spring and fall is the best time to come. And I find it very nice. It's really perfect weather to enjoy some of the calmer locations in this busy city. There are 20 lakes in Hanoi. There's water everywhere. And they're not only beautiful, they're a big social draw. You'll see people coming out doing Tai Chi in the morning. They'll be taking walks and jogging, having lunch. But on the weekends, Saturday night, date night, this is when the couples come out. They hold hands, they get romantic, and it's so sweet. In Vietnamese, the word for water also means nation or country. And here in Hanoi, water even has a role in their national entertainment. Well, my daughter's been dying to see the water puppets. When, what are they? Oh yeah, this is the place. And this is like the most popular place for you to come and see the water puppets. Well, this is like very original, come original art in Vietnam. And you see that most of the puppets in different country might be on like, on stay and a drive, but here, you buy water, and a lot of water, and it's very, as you know, very traditional. Even, you know, see the costume on it, and you right. can't find anywhere. You must see, and you have to see it here. We have to see it. Yes, let's go. <laughs> the art of water puppetry has existed in Vietnam since the 10th century, but you've probably never seen it performed. Until recently, this art form has been staged only in Vietnam. The puppets don't just act out one play during the show. Instead, they perform 18 to 25 vignettes that are based on everything from national folklore to stories about everyday life in rural Vietnam. Check out those fish in the water. It almost looks like that puppet is angling for real fish. Becoming a puppeteer is quite an arduous task. For centuries, fathers would pass the skill on to their sons. Today, it's still very difficult as well as prestigious to become a water puppeteer. Guilds go to a lot of trouble to maintain the secrets of their profession. Even today, some of the more difficult moves are referred to only by their code names. The puppets are beautiful, but what brings the show to life is the music that accompanies the show. At each performance, there's a Vietnamese orchestra and Chio singers. It's quite impressive. This is a great way to soak up a little Vietnamese culture. Plus, it's fun for the kids, even the really big kids. Here's a tip. Bring your most comfortable walking shoes and try not to carry heavy purses and camera gear when sightseeing. Laura McKenzie's Traveler will be right back. Hanoi is not only a very old and cultured city, it's also home to some fabulous shopping. And believe me, there are deals to be made as well. What's the difference between shopping in Hanoi and shopping in Saigon? Well, the difference is the price. The price are cheaper here, and you can bargain more. And another thing is Hanoi is more of art. 
And so you can find anything in art, like you know, in the mask or in painting. The oldest section of town is called the Old Quarter. Well, way back when, they used to call this the city of 36 streets, because literally there were 36 streets here. And each street represented what it sold. This was the commercial center. So there was Salt Street and Sugar Street and Bamboo Street and Shoe Street and even Fish Sauce Street, if you can believe that. You know, I wonder if there's a Purse Street. The streets developed this way over 700 years ago, when guild members would cluster together with other craftsmen in their particular field. Therefore, the street's inhabitants all worked in the same field or handicraft. Eventually, the street became known by what professionals resided there. Today, there are over 70 streets in the old quarter, and I think I walked most of them, so I can say from experience, wear comfortable shoes. Vietnam is very diverse, and depending on what city or area you're in, no trip to this country would be complete without heading south to Ho Chi Minh City to see a different side of this fascinating culture. Ho Chi Minh City also goes by its old name, Saigon. People use both names interchangeably. This is a city that still respects and follows Vietnamese traditions, but it's also much more Western than Hanoi. I think what I like about Ho Chi Minh City is that it's really different from anything else that I've seen in Asia. It's sort of a, a fusion and a mix of the, of the old Oriental and the French and the colonial. It's really exciting. And then the fact that you see motorbikes everywhere instead of cars, so many motorbikes. It's just, it's just different. I like it. And while you're zipping along on your scooter, you may have an urge to just close your eyes and block out the oncoming traffic. Oh, it's not a safety issue, it's just that you'll want to keep your eyes peeled for some of the famous sites in Saigon, like the Cathedral of Notre Dame, the Unification Palace, even famous movie locations. This corner where we are right here, I've seen in movies and pictures, it's very famous, isn't it? Oh yes, this is a famous coffee shop, and like you see like in the old day, like the French, they built it, it's still the same way, especially in the movie, The Quiet American. They film right here, this is the first time when Michael Caine met his girlfriend, the Vietnamese girlfriend right here. So this coffee shop is still keep the same way before even in the movie until today. Whether you're keeping or giving away your purchases, the place to come for good deals is the market. The market's divided into three sections, fashion, food, and souvenirs and handicrafts. Now the food section down here is kind of fun for photographs, but you're not going to want to eat anything because you might get the Saigon crud, if you know what I mean. Fashion area is great, handicrafts area is great, and you do want to bargain. They expect a discount about 30%, and if you use U.S. dollars, you're going to get a better buy. But I've gained so much from this trip, and not just new possessions. I've gained new experiences, like an oyster cultivating a pearl. Vietnam and Cambodia have remained closed off to the world while they nurtured their own cultural wonders. But luckily for us, they're now ready to open up to foreigners and show us all the amazing things they have to offer. Here's a tip, make sure to bring or buy a duffel bag, as the shopping is so cheap you'll be bringing a lot home. Laura McKenzie's Traveler, we'll be right back. I don't know what I expected from Cambodia and Vietnam, but it's much more than what I thought it would be. This part of the world is fascinating, and it's a place I would definitely like to come back to spend more time. Not just shopping, but discovering more sites, more temples, more cities, and well, maybe a few more markets. The prices for everything here are cheap. The people are friendly, and the hotels and food are great. Can you bring the kids? You bet. I feel welcome, and I feel very safe. And basically, it's my new favorite destination. So, on the Laura McKenzie scale of 1 to 10, I give hotels a 9, food an 8, shopping 10, getting around 7, sites and activities 10, and value for the money 10. Would I go back? In a heartbeat for the sites and the shopping. 
I hope you enjoyed seeing it with me and that you'll join me again next time from another terrific place somewhere else around the world. From Ho Chi Minh City, I'm Laura McKenzie. Bye-bye.